request um, oh, and, and uh, the request is about end times and judgment day teachings and this also connects to the Apostles Creed because if you look at the Apostles Creed you have at the end of the very first paragraph that Jesus sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Quick. Quick means living. You may have heard uh, in the old days someone talks about cut to the quick. That's the living part of us. So the judgment of the living and the dead. And that is the return of Jesus. What do we believe about his return? What do we believe about the end of times? Well, we'll start off with a reading from Matthew 24. From Matthew 24, I'm going to read you verses 1 through 14 and then 32 and 34. Now, if you've got your Bible, I can give you as we go some verses to mark and remember. Matthew 24, verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. And he answered them, you see these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered, and this one you mark, verse 4, Take heed that no one leads you astray. Take heed that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed this must take place. The end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. This is but the beginning of the pains of birth. And they'll deliver you up to tribulation, put you to death. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because wickedness is multiplied, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. Now let me take you down to verse, um, verse 32. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender, and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see all these things, all the things that are listed in the previous text, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, with a request to preach about end times and judgment day, I brought 
just a sample of my collection of books about the end of days. And if you've got one that you don't want, that maybe got published in the past, I have a collection of all the books I can find about the end of days. And there's a reason why I collect this. I started when I was teaching religion at the college because there's a lot of popular misconception about the end of days. And I found that it was easiest to illustrate it using a few of these books. So I'm gonna take a minute here and, and I, I wanna share I want to share a few. I, I just brought a few, and I've got dozens in my office. And uh, I'm going to find a few here that look good. Now, the first one I'm going to share is 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 this this one by Lowell Hart. Okay, Satan's music exposed. Young people today, the music they listen to, you know, it's all about love and, and all kinds of bad things, and it's got to be of the devil, right? The book was written in 1970, and every song in here is a golden oldie now, <laughs> okay? So this one is... Uh, it's, it's just, I, I get a kick out of this. I really do. And, and, and all the, the various problems that were happening in 1970. Why, if this was 1970, I'd be up here talking about how awful everything is and how dreadful everything is. So that, I'll, I'll, we'll pass these around. You can look at them. You can get a, see what you think their, the message is. Oh, this one is special. Okay. This is the DVD edition of Left Behind. Left Behind. That's where the airplanes are flying and everybody on the airplane gets raptured and the airplane just crashes into the ground. Do, 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 And this stars Mr. T. <laughs> it is a, 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 a real special piece here. <laughs> Collectible. Not for sale either. <laughs> and we got others here. Um, this one, uh, the projection for survival. Again, it talks about how awful everything is. This is from the 1960s. And, and all the terrible things that are happening here, the cover really kind of kind of says it all. I'm gonna pass this, I'll start this one back on this back row here. You go, know, Gene, you can. You can. <coughs> now, this one is very special. The Eve of Armageddon. And this one from 1917. Let me show you this picture. Get a good look at this picture, okay? Now, these two, this is uh, our day in the light of prophecy. It's about how the Bible prophesies that all the stuff that's happening today is predicted in the Bible. What does the Bible predict? Storms, earthquakes, wars, economic problems, this kind of disease, plague, all that predicted. This is 1917. 1917 was a very rough time. There was a lot of stuff happening. They were getting ready to allow women to vote. You know, now certainly that'd be the end of the world, wouldn't it? <laughs> and, and this picture says it all on the eve of Armageddon, showing people's alarm over the First World War. 
So I like to, when I spot these things, these brochures, end times teachings, or anything like that, that I can collect, I like to collect it because I like to look at the way we believed and what we thought, and in particular, how we responded to the stress of the times in which we live. Because every time brings us stress, brings us alarm, brings us stuff to worry about. And that's what this scripture is for. The scripture is to help us have faith in times of trouble. It is to help us have faith in tribulation. And that's what it's all about, is to help us get through the trouble that is our trouble. Whatever our trouble is, to get through it, to get to the other side. So I'm gonna, I'll drop these off on the back here and uh, we'll pick all this stuff up after worship today. And uh, y'all can just pass it around to your heart's content. And I've got piles of this stuff. The, 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 the point is very important though, because the, the, the apocalyptic scriptures, the end time scriptures are not about politics and they are not about geography. And that's the misconception that keeps happening over and over and over and over again is that folks get the idea that this prophecy or that prophecy is about this war or that dictator or this problem or this country or that country. It's not about geography. And it's not about politics. It's about you. It's for you to take comfort and hope in times of tribulation. Now, my, my text that I work on that, that, that brought this into my mind, because I went for years looking at all the terrible worries you know, you turn on the TV and the TV tells you, oh, look at this awful thing and look at this terrible thing and you need to worry about this and they get you cranked up and they always do that. And, and I, I got to thinking hard about the end of time and judgment for years. But this is the scripture. This is the scripture that I really came to see clearly. Jesus says this, when you, this is Matthew 24, 33 and 34. When you see all these things, you know that he is near. He's close to you at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. What I have chosen to do is to take that scripture to heart. This generation, that's our generation, that's us, right? Will not pass away till all these things take place. And I also hold it to be true for my mother's generation, because her generation has passed away. And I hold it to be true for my grandfather's generation and my great-grandfather's generation and all the generations, because the tech, Jesus doesn't say which. He just says this. And what that means is you who are alive 
right now are going to see these things. Wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines and plagues and fires and upsets and hatred and conflict and stress and trouble. It's all ours. It's about the scripture is our word. It's for us. It's for us to take comfort. It's for us to take hope. It's for us to keep going. And when I say keep going, keep loving. I love this part. Because wickedness is multiplied, most people's love will grow cold. Don't let your love get cold. <coughs> keep, keep, keep that, that blessed feeling that you're going to love through the trouble. Let the trouble strengthen your faith. Let the trouble bring you inspiration and the knowledge that you are a child of God, loved and blessed and redeemed and destined for eternity. And hold that and let the geography take care of itself and let the politics take care of itself and just trust in the Lord. Now, with regard to the return of Jesus, also look at John 14, 3. John 14, 3, where Jesus says this. This is, this is uh, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Get to the third verse. When I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. This scripture is deeply personal. It is meant for us to understand that there's a place for us, that Christ will come and bring us, that's you, and me to himself irregardless of what kind of trouble or what kind of mess we got to go through to get there so the scripture is not specifically about the mess the scripture is about us getting through the mess now judgment is really interesting because the creed says, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. So there are two ideas here that are kind of opposite one another, but very helpful. We know that by the blood of Christ, we are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. Whatever happened in the past, is forgiven whatever we said or did or whatever they said or he said or she said or did in the past if it's in the past it's gone and we can accept it is <clears throat> forgiven by the blood of Christ our sins are forgiven but there is still judgment and, and I take this scripture from the end of Revelation, from the very, very end of Revelation, where it basically says that, that, that says that God is seated on the throne of judgment. All the people that ever lived are gathered before God, and books are opened. And these are the books where the dead are judged by what they have done. So you see how you've got forgiveness, but you also have judgment. Now, what is judgment? Judgment 
is understanding the consequences of your actions. See, we are forgiven for our sins, but that does not absolve us from facing the consequences of our actions. See, any action we take in this world will bear consequences. It will cause stuff to happen. Now, my belief is that when we are at that final judgment, we will be made aware of the consequences of our actions, of our words, of our choices, of all that we have done. Now think about it for a minute, because if we live our lives seeking good, live our lives trying to do what is right, live our lives loving and caring for one another and serving one another and helping one another, picking people up and helping them and, and help and take care of them in our own way, you're going to realize the consequences of where that went. And, and what a blessing. What a, a, a phenomenal blessing it is to see the good, to see the final good outcome, to see where all that love leads us together. And similarly, if all a person did in their life was harm, was just to hurt one another and do bad things, consequences. You see where it went and what it resulted in. And, and so in faith, our task living today is to try to help always bring the good in every situation. Always look for the blessing that comes. Always look for the way to help, the way to ease the pain, the way to love one another, the way to let the positive, positive good come through it all. And there you see the judgment. And, and so it's a both and. All the sin is forgiven. All the sin is wiped out. And yes, when the day comes that we stand before the Lord, we will know what it all resulted in. And that will be a blessing. And so, yes, from thence he came. It says that, that he sinneth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. That whatever it is, it comes before the judgment of God. And the judgment of God is ultimately loving and ultimately caring and ultimately good. And so whatever the trouble might be, whatever the big worry is to be worried about this week, and it'll be something else to worry about next week, whatever the crisis and catastrophe of this week may be, another one comes next week, we will be strong in the love of Christ until he comes again. Amen.